Uh, this is 2010 Form B, A, B, B, C for response four, the squirrel problem. A squirrel starts at building A uh, at time t equals zero and travels along a straight wire connected to building B. Uh, for time between zero and 18, the squirrel's velocity is modeled by this piecewise function that is terribly graphed by me, so please look at the actual AP paper. Um, part A. At what times in the interval, uh, the open interval from zero to 18, if any, does the squirrel change direction give a reason for your answer? So this entire squirrel problem is going to be a lot about translating uh, from what you're asked to what the mathematical definition is to what you can see with your eyeballs, right? Or if you want to sound fancy, by visual observation. So part A, the ask, right, the thing they ask is when does the squirrel change direction, right? So we need to know what change direction uh means mathematically, right? So the definition of changing direction for a particle or a squirrel or whatever it is, in this case it's a squirrel, is that v of t changes sign, right? So because a v of t that is positive would mean the squirrel's moving to the right and a v of t that is negative would mean the squirrel's moving left or in this case a v of t that is positive would mean that the squirrel is moving towards building b and a v of t that is negative would mean it's moving back towards the building from whence it came. So that's the definition. So then my job, right, in communicating my answer is to link that to what I can see by visual observation, which is really just saying with your eyeballs, right? So what that's saying is that the given graph crosses zero, right? Crosses the x-axis. So we essentially need to find and, and specifically crosses, right? So, so here the, the squirrel starts running at building A and, and runs forward towards building B. That's not a change in direction because this is the start and this is the end. So these are the two possibilities for where I change direction. Not just possibilities, like those are the two answers. But I need to find the actual values where that happens, right? Um, so I just need to clarify real quick that um, we need to make sure that, that these are the values that we would expect them to be, right? Um, so if you, you can see either by looking at the graph, and their graph is definitely better than mine. Uh, sorry, hang on. Gonna zoom in a little because I'm blind. So I'm pretty sure that you can see, yeah, so these two zeros definitely happen at 9 and 15. I just wanted to confer that and like make sure I didn't have to figure them out. So my answer is at t equals 9 and 15, right? And my reason is because the v of t graph changes sign, right? Um, so uh, I just wanted to make sure because again, my graph is terrible and uh, so V of T graph changes sign. And you don't even need the graph part, you can just say V of T changes sign. So again, uh, you need to use this definition and then apply it to what you see with your eyes. So T is 9 and T is 15. Cool. Uh, part, sorry that I had to check, but again, my uh, graph is not the awesomest, and so I wanted to make sure I'm a real deal. All right, cool. Part B. At what time in the interval from 0 to 18 inclusive, meaning including both t equals 0 and t equals 18, is the squirrel farthest from the building and how far is the squirrel at this time? Okay, so now we're talking about uh, the extrema, right, of the squirrel's position, right? Farthest from, uh, farthest from building A, right, is saying when is its position the most positive, right? Because moving towards B. So, so when we look at B, what we're being asked... We are being asked about essentially the absolute max of the squirrel's position, right? We're being asked when is the squirrel's position the farthest uh, away from A. So when is when is the squirrel as far as possible? So anytime we're asked about extrema, right? So if we're asked about extrema for position, then we need to use a an x prime of t, or in this case, a v of t, because that's what x prime is, sign chart, right? I need, to use, uh, I need to use a sign chart for the derivative of position if I'm trying to find the max position. So that means that the critical points that I need, right, the critical points that I need to look at are when v of t is 0, when v of t does not exist, or at included endpoints, right? These are the possible candidates for my critical points, and that's what's going to matter, right? So I should make sure I identify all of those. Well, I know that the included endpoints are 0 and 18, 
And I know that I already found the spots where V of T was zero. They were nine and 15 and also at T equals zero. But again, T is zero is already covered by the, uh, T is zero is already covered by the endpoint anyway. And there are no places on this window where the velocity doesn't exist. There are places where the derivative of velocity doesn't exist. You would not be able to derive velocity at two because it's got a point in the graph. But velocity itself is this actual graph and this graph exists from zero to 18. Cool. So that means that I see a total of four critical points, 0, 9, 15, and 18. So if I find the distance, uh, if I find the position of the squirrel at those times, I can tell you which one's the biggest. So that's what I'm going to do. So for part B, I'm going to find the squirrel's position, right? Uh, so for part B, I know that my only possible critical numbers, right? And I could make a sign chart, but since I, since I will still need to know which ones are the biggest, uh, because they want the single farthest position, it makes sense to go ahead and find them. My critical numbers are when t is 0, uh, 9, 15, and 18. So I need to find the position at those times, right? Position. All right, there we go. All right, so I know that at 0, the squirrel's position is at 0 because it's at building A. In order to find the squirrel's position at 9, I just need to integrate under this curve, right? The squirrel's position at 9 is going to be that starting position of 0 plus this area. Well, this is a trapezoid that has a height of 20. This base is 9 units and this base is 5 units. So 1 half the height times the sum of the bases means that I'm going to get that this is a 140, right? For 15, I need to take the 140 that I just started with, right? The 140 that I was at at 9, right? And then just subtract this trapezoid, right? So minus and then one half, the height of this trapezoid is a 10. If you want to call it a negative 10, you just wouldn't write the minus here. That's fine. Uh, and the sum of the bases, this is from 9 to 15, which would be a base of 6. And this is from 10 to 14, which would be a base of 4. So uh, 6 plus 4. So I get that this is a 140 minus a 50, which is a 90. And then to get 18, I would take this 90 that I just had and I would add to it the amount that I change when I increase by this trapezoid. Now this trapezoid has a base that goes from 15 to 18, which is three. The other base is from 16 to 18, which is two. And the height of this thing is I believe also a 10. So one half the height times the sum of the bases, which would be three plus two. So I end up getting that is a 90 plus a 25 which is a 115. Sorry, it's a 25. So when I'm asked when is the squirrel the farthest from building A, the answer is at T is 9. I need so uh, so my answer at T equals 9, the squirrel is the farthest from building A. Right, building A. Um, and they ask how far. Um, and it's 140 feet, right? So I, I'm asked both when and how far. So 140 feet, um, and it was, oh, sorry, it's not feet. Erase the feet, just 140. Be careful. Don't invent units when they don't exist. They did not give me units. It's just a 140. Cool. Uh, part C, find the total distance the squirrel travels during the time interval from 0 to 18. So uh, there's a couple different ways to deal with this. The easiest way to deal with it, so the easiest way to find total distance in part C is that the total distance is the integral from 0 to 18 of not the, not the velocity but the speed. Well, the only, way, the only thing you have to do to make this speed is make this guy a plus because this is the absolute value of this graph, the exact same graph but with the bottom stuff flipped up. So... That's just going to be each of these areas separately, right? This one plus this one plus this one added together. We've already found all of those areas, right? This first area we determined was a 140, right? The next area we determined was a 50, right? And the last area I believe we determined was a 25, right? Uh, so you'd add the 140, the thing that was a negative 50 a second ago, but now it's positive 50 because it's up here, and the 25, uh, and you'd get 215. Again, there's no units here, right? Um, again, the trick is that what's happening is the squirrel's running to the right, stops, 
runs left a little bit, stops, runs back to the right. But running left, although it, it changes your displacement, doesn't change how far the squirrel physically ran. All right, cool. And lastly, uh, part D, write expressions for the squirrel's acceleration, A of T, V of T, and X of T from building A that are valid for the time interval from 7 to 10. Okay. So that means that we are only looking at this window. So this is 7 to 10. Okay. So we know that it's, so we can start right away by finding its acceleration because, so, so here's what we know. We know that V of T, right? So we know that V of 7 is 20, right? And we know that V of 10 is negative 10, right? So A of T is just going to be the slope of this line, right? A of T is going to be the slope of this line. It's the derivative, but because this is linear, it's just a number. So A of T is literally just going to be uh, the negative 10 minus the 20 over the 10 minus the 7 right? So it's going to be a negative 30 over a 3. It's going to be a negative 10, right? My v of t, the easiest way to find v of t is to recognize that basically it's a line that has a slope of negative 10, right? And then goes through either of these points. It doesn't actually matter which one you pick, right? So this is, so my, so my a of t, so the first part of this problem, uh, I think the easiest thing to do is inch you this way. So uh, when, when I go to put my answer, right, the first answer is that a of t is uh, is a negative 10. It's a constant. It's just the slope of this line, right? Uh, and again, this is on the window only from 7 to 9. That's why I'm using this chunk of the line, right? V of t is essentially what happens if I integrate this. So I'll get a negative 10t plus some constant. And then I can use either of these equations uh, because they're in that window that I'm looking at. I can use either of these uh, points rather to find the c in the equation. The other option is you could just use point slope. You know the slope of this line. You know either point. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, so if I were you, I, I like ones that don't have negatives. So when I go to find V of T, I would recognize that this is my Y value, right? So, so V of T minus the Y value, right? Y minus the Y value equals my slope, which we can see the slope of this line is a negative 10. Uh, X minus the X value, but again, in this case, it's a T, so T minus 7, right? So I would probably just write my V of T as a negative 10 times the quantity T minus 7 uh, plus a 20, right? Or if you want, you can distribute... I will say that distributing is a lot easier for when you have to uh, to integrate to find position. It's up to you. If you distribute this, you're going to get a negative 10t plus a 70 plus a 20. So that's going to be plus a 90, right? Uh, so my v of t is going to be a negative 10t plus a 90. Great. So that's two of them, right? To find the last one, I'm going to just integrate v of t and then use the position that I, uh, I, I know one of the positions, and I'm going to use one of those positions uh, to find c. So if I want x of t, I'm going to integrate this negative 10t plus 90 with respect to t, right? And I'm going to get that x of t is a negative 5t squared plus a 90t plus some c. The trick is that I need to use a position either at, I need to use a position at a value that I know that's in this interval. Now, I already know that x of 9 was 140. I know that from part b, I want to say, part b, right? I know from part B that x of 9 is 140. Now, the reason I picked the x of 9 point is I had to pick something in the 7 to 9 window. And of all the positions I already know, that's the only one that happens to fall in the 7 to 9 window uh, because I, I knew 0, 9, 15, and 18. So if I use that that 9, 140, and it doesn't have to be 9, 140, I could uh, use 7, comma, and then I could figure out what the 7 position is, but I know 9, 140. So I could say, cool. Uh, 140 equals negative 5 times an 81 plus a 90 times a 9 plus a C. And I'm going to go ahead and own that this is not like the most fun thing in the whole world to deal with, but we'll be all right. Uh, one of the reasons this isn't as bad as you might think it is, well, depends on how you feel about it, I guess, um, is that there's actually an 81 in this and there's also an 81 in this. So this is a 140, right? If you factor a 9 out, you have a negative 5 times an 81, and you have a 10 times an 81, right, plus C. Well, that means that this is a 5 times an 81. So you get 140 equals 5 times 81 plus C. So 140 uh, equals a 405 plus C, right? If I subtract that over, right, subtract the 405, 
uh, I'm going to get that my C is a negative 265. So my answer is that x of t is negative 5t squared plus 90t minus a 265. And I know I ran a little bit out of space there. Um, again, the trick is that you really had to use uh, an x point that is somewhere in that 7 to 9 window. And I could have used, uh, the AP actually did use x of 7. My argument was, why bother? I already, uh, I already know what x of 9 is, so I just use that one.